so last week we talked about how there's no way Russia is going to invade. <clears throat> And all, you know, we were talking about diplomacy and all the ways we could get out of this. And then Putin just like had a glimpse in the mirror and was like, it is small. And then he was like, let's go, you know, and that's how we got here. And uh, now everything has hit the fan. Um, so this was the week where Putin basically invaded Ukraine and saying he was going to denazify the country. Mm. Um, and it wasn't clear if he just wanted to control the ethnically Russian parts of Ukraine or predominantly Russian parts of U Ukraine. But it now looks like he does want regime change in Kiev. He's begun aerial bombardment. He's hit civilian buildings, hospitals. Many Ukrainians have either tried to evacuate or sheltering underground or are joining the fight as volunteers, including Miss Ukraine. Mm. And I'm like, fuck, dude. I when feel. you lose Mr. You, when you lose Mr. Ukraine, that's like you've really lost it. If it's she's on. staying to fight, it's on. oh, it's super on. There's also like so many Molotov cocktails right. being made, and um, and I find that adorable and awesome, uh, and pretty badass. Um, it's not totally clear, however, how many people have been killed. There are estimates that say 250 Ukrainian civilians and 3,000 Russian soldiers. Um, but it seems like right now, at least Sunday evening, President of Ukraine Zelensky, Vladimir Zelensky, agreed to talks with Russia um, or Vladimir. I don't know. They have the same name, but they're like spelled differently. And it's mm. fucked up. Um, so <laughs> there's going to be talks on the Belarus border. It's not clear if these talks are like a ploy. Like, is this all just like a ruse or a ruski? What is going on? All I know, you guys, is that Sean Penn is on the scene. He's well, there. That, sometimes that when he's in Haiti, I love it because he's, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes he's on the scene and he's doing the greatest stuff in the world. That's true. And, and then, then other sometimes times. El Chapo and you have mixed feelings. Exactly. Then other times he's like telling El Chapo that he like will get him like a Birkin bag or something. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. wrong. It's wrong to tell <laughs> outlaws, give them promises. Okay. It's Sean Penn. He was in Fast Times at Richmond High. Like, it, I think he's running on that equity. Which yeah. we can all agree was one of the greatest comedies of all time. Yeah, right. Okay. Let him do what he wants. Yeah. Um, we should just be playing that on the Russian and Ukrainian border. Like, if everyone could just sit and watch, collectively watch Fast Times together, peace will come, I'm sure. Um. What's the Kurt? I just want to say the thing. I, it's been sticking in my mind since you brought up Kurt Russell. What is the Kurt Russell thing? Where what is it when he's applauding because uh, Vladimir Putin is singing? Uh, what is he saying? The song that makes everybody. Uh, I lost my freedom. <laughs> he lost his freedom on Blueberry Hill. I don't remember. Why this. is Kurt Russell applauding? I know he's right wing, but what what's what's he like? Kurt Russell was that? applauding. I haven't seen that video yet. I cannot defame Kurt Russell because I do not know. Of this oh, video. it's in. He's in Russia with the. He. I don't know if he's with Gerard Pe Depardieu, but they're in Russia um, right now. Dude, not right now. this is an old clip. Okay, okay. Maybe it was oh, okay. in Russia. All right, there you go. I, I, I got. Is I got, this like, like some Steven Seagal level? Like it's like he's like Putin's a mass sort of his like '90s or '80s and '90s like you know action heroes, action stars. Yeah, I would. Wouldn't that be something that Putin would do? Because if you ever like, if you're like an immigrant kid. Those countries love 80s action stars. Like on VHS, yeah, yeah. we used to get on bootleg John Claude and Steven Seagal. And like all these dictators, like, I will be friends with Seagal. Come, we'll be yes. friends. <laughs> no, Kurt Russell, come here. You're 100% right. That's exactly what he was trying to do. He's like got so say, many asks into Pam Anderson. <laughs> um, let me just say this one thing I've always hated Putin. I'm, I'm, I'm old. I yes. can first of all, I remember when it was Ms. Ukraine. Okay. Um, I've always hated Putin. He's always been terrible. But I live in a country where George W. Bush did the worst thing in the history of this country. When he mm -hmm. invaded, uh, I mean, the first, I, I, I remember in 1991, I was playing a club in Staten Island called Grandpa's Comedy Club. Mm -hmm. and, and, they, and they said to me, don't mention the war. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to mention the war mm -hmm. on Staten Island. But the first one, I was against that. But then the second one was just, the worst, uh, one of the worst crimes ever committed on human. So how do we, we don't have anything to, uh, except now Biden's, you know, I'm rooting for Biden because I don't think he's crazy. Yeah. 
No, it's we let's get to that. Like, I mean, we should dig into that hypocrisy um, because, yeah, we don't have a lot of moral standing on this. I want to finish sort of what's been ha what happened this week. Um, the U.N. Security Council met. They tried to pass a resolution condemning the invasion. Eleven voted yes, but China, India, United Arab Emirates abstained. And Russia, of course, used its veto power to block it. Like, you know, they were like, oh, this is a self-graded assignment. <laughs> um, a plus. Like, you know, they, of course, are going to give themselves an out on this. Um, the U.N. General Assembly is going to be meeting this week. They're like an emergency meeting. First, like, or one of 10 times in the last 50 years. Biden, who we again know is not trying to get into the hot war with Russia at the moment, has announced sanctions on major Russian banks, the country's sovereign debt and three mm. individuals. He then added the individual of Vladimir Putin himself. Um, bank sanctions prohibit American financial institutions from processing transactions for Russian banks. And no one is more upset than the NRA. I mean, they fucking really needed that money. Like Wayne LaPierre just bought three thousand dollar croc boots. And like crocodile boots, not like croc boots. <laughs> Gross. Why, why doesn't he send? Why don't they Please. send all their weapons to Ukraine? Why doesn't the NRA get all of the weapons that we don't need here, put it in a big box, and send it to the people who could actually use the weapons? Well, because thank you. A, Vote because for in, me. Because in a 2019 Senate report, it was revealed that the NRA was used as a foreign asset by Russia. I'm not making that up. No, exactly. I <laughs> They would probably just give them to the Russian side, yes. I think, is yes, why we why want think, them. You, you, don't, you don't want the NRA to pull a Sean Pan. You're like, NRA, just stay at home. Just stay at home and kill Americans. Uh, just let, just stay out of this one, if you can, yeah. please. <laughs> the one time we want them to, like, just stay back. Um, so, Zelensky, let's talk about him, okay? Comedian. He's become... Comedian, thank He's you. a former comedian. That's right. Uh, sketch. More and, sketch than stand-up, I think. Okay. So, Andy, what do you think? Does this bode well for our kind, or does it mean we're cursed? Like, if well, we get into office, someone's going to try and topple us. Let me tell you something. People go, would you do... No, I would not. My first instinct is I would be running away from my wife and all people. You're from on your, your wife? Own. You would be running away with your wife or from your away wife? Away from my wife. You're on your own. <laughs> you want her. I need to say... I'm, Take I have her. You. I'm, I'm Take her. <laughs> so, no. So, I don't know that he was like this beforehand but somehow he i mean i'm just so it's pretty amazing when that he stood up and stayed there absolutely yeah. yeah he's doing a lot of i would say a lot of front facing camera videos you know and sort of like an anderson cooper like casual tea <laughs> he's got like his fatigues on also he's he clearly is practiced in front of a camera and an audience um and he's he's you know uh, I, I was going to play some videos, but uh, you don't want to hear me be the translator. Um, you guys should watch them. He says he doesn't want to abandon Kiev, the capital. And when offered an evacuation plan by the United States, he said, quote, the fight is here. I need ammunition, not a ride. And he's like also, that. look, this is what I expect from the Ukrainian voice of Paddington Bear. Because that's also one of his jobs. People forget that, that he was the voice of Paddington Bear, but the Ukraine version. But you also have to say, like, when it, <laughs> when it comes to comedians, right, oftentimes they exist in two extremes. So you, you see, like, the comedian in Italy who's the leader of like, the far right movement. Yes. And then you see Zelensky. You're like, all right, Zelensky, if, if these are my choices. Let's just hope if comedian, if Andy wishes to run for, like, office, let's hope he joins, like, you know, the pro-democracy movement and doesn't become, like, a fascist. I have faith in the former. <laughs> That but, is, you know, I, I'm sad that you think that I, I said, might I have faith in the yet. former. I said I have faith in the former. <laughs> I'm Jewish. But, you know, I'm Jewish. You know, I don't yeah, like the exactly. Nazis. But, no, that's but I, so true, though. Yeah. Like, what is it? Salvini in, in yeah. Italy, right? Uh, yeah. Joe Comedian. Rogan. Joe Rogan here, right? Oh, it's a good Joe example. Rogan. Rogan Carola, yeah. He used to be the worst comic in the world. I, you know, I, I, I never thought he could actually kill millions of people with his bad information. Whoever thought bad comedy could get that serious? Well, look, bad. He started the bad information with bad sex information on Love Line. Uh, so, oh, another deep cut. Look at this. I love it. Being a child of the nineties, I'm Fear <laughs> Factor. He also made Americans uh, love eating horse testicles again. So, oh no, I'm talking about Corolla, but yes, I love Corolla. Corolla yeah, good. who did the Man Show? Look at the. I wonder if you can tell from the shows these people did the Man Show. That's right. Hmm. And yet indicate? you got Kimmel, who like actually understood the irony. It was ironic, people. 
Um, you know, Francesca, I said this is a good point. Like, if if our generation goes back, you see, Kimmel was part of that crew that Andy's talking about, right? Like the Man Show and like that testosterone, like, oh, bro, yeah, let's just talk about chicks. We're like young white dudes who want a bone. Ugh. But then Kimmel kind of grew up and he had a family and he kind of evolved yeah. and he has empathy. And then you see a guy like Rogan just double down in his echo chamber because. He has this like friggin' legion of fans, thanks to the UFC, which is also right wing. And Dana White's like an open fan of Donald Trump. Spotify right. says, all right, we'll give you a hundred million dollars because we want your base. And yep. you go ahead and spread disinformation and kill people in a during a pandemic that has already killed five million. A comedian. That's the power of comedy. It's, it's actually really fascinating because I was thinking about Salvini and I was thinking about Zelensky, but Andy pulled out Rogan. I'm like, oh, yeah, look at Rogan. Like, why the hell is this guy this influential? It's remarkable. I don't think he wants to run for office. Can you imagine him just like like imagine the war room is just like his podcast and he's sitting around with a bunch of other kind of like douchebag anti-vaxxers who are like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, you know, it's like uh, direct nipples, though. They all have shirtless. They all take shirtless photos. Yeah, like and, and like they're like because he has like erect nipples because apparently he takes some vitamins or something. They're all doing push ups. And they I just, mean, like, I don't look at his nipples photos. the way you do, but you know, look, it's, it's yeah. I'm I'm there. Yeah, but he's also uh, I mean, Rogan is I mean, wasn't even he was a terrible stand up, terrible. He was the worst. And I'm I'm I I can tell you that I, I know about stand up. He was horrible. As we say in New York, he did funny sounds. He's always hated women. He's always been. I mean, so that's go. That's part of the package going in that Spotify bought. You're right. buying one of the world's biggest misogynists. He's a racist who's used the N word a million times. Let's sweeten the deal. Right. Um, okay. So a couple like crystal ball situation. Uh, thinking about what could happen. Zelensky is meeting with Putin. Yeah. He says. Quote, I will frankly say I will say frankly that I do not really believe in the outcome of this meeting, but let them try to make sure that no citizen of Ukraine has any doubt that I, as president, did not try to stop the war. And he's been in a more recent address, been very forthcoming with the people of Russia as well, saying, mm. you know, I'm going to I'm speaking to you directly, essentially, like I'm appealing to you um, that you are not necessarily the enemy. Um, That's smart. And it is really smart. And it and we'll we will see. I really hope this is not like a ploy to draw him away from Kiev and like then topple it. But again, what am I gonna do? What are we gonna do? <laughs> Who what am are I we gonna do? Yeah. Let's remember not just a comic, but this is the same Zelensky as Max Berger reminded us. He writes on Twitter, I'm not sure most Americans realize the heroic Ukrainian president everyone is praising uh. is the exact same guy Donald Trump was impeached for trying to extort. Yeah. On July 18th, 2019, the Trump administration with withheld $250 million of military aid to Ukraine. Seven days later, Trump held a phone call with Zelensky and asked him to investigate former Vice President Joe Biden and his son, Hunter. And yet, here we have Zelensky and Biden in office. He wanted that money. He wasn't going to give him the money yeah. until he could give him some dirt about Hunter Biden. I mean, it's just... <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm going to collapse from inc incredulity. I just can't <laughs> even believe it. I, I just can't believe he that idiot, that Nazi won. And I just, every time. And so maybe maybe I'll, I'll throw it over to Wajahat to uh, save me on this. No, so I think the fact that Zelensky held his ground, right, both times is very impressive. And also when people try to blame Biden on the right, you're like, no, Trump actually withheld money and aid that they needed to protect themselves against this Russian advance. Because people forget that Russia already invaded Ukraine in 2014. Yeah. Crimea, that's an invasion, right? And so Zelensky is not stupid. He goes, okay, I got Russia breathing down my neck. Please help me. I'm an ally. And Trump is like, well, you have to first open a sham investigation into Hunter because mm -hmm. Biden's going to you know, run in 2020. And so to help himself in the 2020 election, he completely threw his ally under the bus. And also, you guys have talked about this on the show. I don't have to mention it. Each and every single time when given the opportunity during his four years as presidency, and even now, and even yesterday at CPAC, Donald Trump has never criticized Vladimir Putin even once. Even yesterday, even though he finally called the invasion abhorrent, he said he had to say it. He goes, Putin's a smart guy. And so, like, tell me how the Republican Party and specifically uh, uh, Trump projected strength and then compare that strength to a stand-up comedian who is trying his best to save his nation that is under invasion from a country that has the most amount of nuclear warheads led yes. by a belligerent, murderous president who <laughs> feels like it is his destiny to recreate the Russian Empire, even if it means leading to World War III.
He also yes. doesn't read. He doesn't read. He's just like Trump, isn't he? I've been hearing Putin doesn't read, doesn't send emails, is cut off from He's everything. He's become very insular during the pandemic. Very insular. Echo chamber. Doesn't shake hands. That's why when you guys see those photos of like Putin... Like at one side of the table and like yes. another leader. 50 All that feet distance. Away. Yeah. He's, he's paranoid true. about catching COVID. And that's made him <laughs> more and more insular in his like megalomania, which is not good for the world, ladies and gentlemen, when you have a brutal dictator who's probably the richest man on earth funding far right movements who believes it is his destiny to recreate the Russian Empire. Yes, yeah, some of us just like put on a few pounds and like, you know, got way too into making craft cocktails every night for ourselves. Putin quarantined and is starting world war three you know like he went real nuts in the quad he took like, it really like he took personal growth during the pandemic to another level he's like yeah. first i will wrestle bear uh, shirtless <laughs> then i will take over ukraine and he's yeah. all, they, he never even tries to hide like every time they go did you po did you poison the pro prove it prove it we didn't poison prove it that was his answer prove it you have no proof then when they give a proof that's not proof it's fake proof yeah, I mean, he but, doesn't but, even try. In the old days, they tried to lie better. And he has a good point, though. That's why I think any type of, I don't, I don't think he's capable of being shamed. I don't think he cares what the international mm -hmm. community thinks. That's what makes it so dangerous. Yeah. is that you can't appeal to otherwise logic or humanity or rationality. That's the the fear here is when Zelensky meets uh, Putin. I hope Zelensky says, "Okay, you can surrender," but I think it's like theater, just like last week was theater. And Putin, if necessary, is willing to exercise all military options to kill as many people as possible, take over Ukraine. That's that's my fear. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, it is. I mean, we could go into this for forever and we are. <laughs> but, you know, I'm also like, why didn't you send all of your troops? He only sent like 100,000, you know, send more. And I know he is. Um, and. But in the fact that he didn't send that many means there's fun videos of like, you know, a farmer dragging with his tractor like one of the russian tanks it's just like fun little moments like that <laughs> so like you know the ukrainians may be outnumbered and outgunned but m my god in terms of the commitment mm. in terms of trying to defend their actual home and again nationalism doesn't always present itself in every country in the same way right and like i think as an american and someone who really is not nationalistic because I equate that with jingoism, I equate mm. that with often xenophobia. It is nice to see a country that, like, I wouldn't fucking fight for this country. Hell no, not now, right? Like, at least, you know, it would probably be a civil war, not a war with someone else invading us. Um, I'd be like, have it, please, have it, China, help us. We need this. Um, but it is nice to see and, inter and interesting and very different to see, like, um, again, everyday Ukrainian people banding together and fighting for their territory in a good uh, display of nationalism. What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.